Welcome to the US Open 2018. We're here in Blaine, Minnesota, just outside the Twin Cities. A big game coming up, a pre-quarter in the YCC under 20 mixed division. We have swing vote from Washington DC, the former 2006 champs in this division taking on Flood from Oregon, 2014 YCC champions. The two champions come up against each other early in the bracket play. I am Liam Grant alongside Eric Larson. Eric, are you excited for this game? So pumped, yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be a big showdown. We're seconds away from the opening pull. Flood coming out on defense, pulling upwind. This one will roll out the side. Now swing vote, look to march downwind. The sun has come out, but the wind has picked up in this late morning game. As they grind up the field, her getting high in the stall count, the lefty player finds Carolyn Cassier. Back to Adam Park. Now packed in front court, the end zone, oh, and throws the interception. Well gathered up by Anne-Marie Haberman. But unfortunately, a quick turnover gives the disc, disc back to swing vote. They can convert this O point with a short field. Let's see what end zone offense they set up. Ben Dixon on the disc. Look to try to break the mark, but instead, oh, a nice open side cut and layout from Adam Park, gives them the early lead. That is 1-0 to Washington. Perfect. So yeah, both teams having to come accustomed to this upwind, downwind game. Great layout catch there from Adam Park. We had a lot of involvement in that opening play. We had a chance to talk with uh, some of the Washington DC coaches before the game, Adrian Nicholson and Asako Yamamoto. Uh, what are you expecting from this Washington team? Uh, the Washington team has actually had uh, pretty rough games this tournament. Um, and uh, actually they, they won this tournament just a, a few years ago. So um, they've had uphill battles the whole time. 5-13, uh, 1-13, and then they lost to Madison most recently, 1-15. So uh, it's going to be an uphill battle, and, and the coaches told us that they're really excited to stay up on the sidelines, uh, stay positive, and uh, push through. Yeah, two different stories for these teams. Swing vote. Losing all their games in the, the upper power pools. That's why they're in this pre-quarter, finishing bottom of that group. Losing to Powerline, Seattle, and Madison. Only scoring one point against both Seattle and Madison. While on the other side, Oregon winning all their games. 15-5 against Granite State. 15-4 against Kalamazoo. And I think 15-8 against Cornsaw. So... Two different mentalities, I think, you know, going into a game, having won all your games, going into a game, having lost. Yeah. Now, Washington was in that power pool, so notably more difficult games. We see Flood here. Jack won straight away to the end zone. Oh, Ooh. almost gathered up. You like that first deep shot as a neutral spectator. So again, going down wind, so very difficult to break going left. I don't know if we'll see a huge amount of breaks in this game. Washington with that opportunity now. Nice undercut. Gain some yards. Good continuation to Jacob Leibowitz. Then shoots to Gunter. Having the long hair and red hairband. Jack one's into the end zone. This one's going to work. Not entirely sure if that was the intended target. That was the first break of the game going upwind. DC take an early two-point lead. Yeah, it sounds like uh, they're 
attempts to stay up on the sidelines is absolutely working. Yeah, attacking that open side pretty much the whole time of swing vote. I'm not sure if that was the intended target from, from Gunter Prizdewick. But uh, we'll, we'll give him the, the benefit of the doubt and say that was a visionary moment. Perfect. And a nice knee slide to end, too. So already, Swing Vote have scored more points in this game than their last two. Yes. Which has got to be a, a nice change. It's got to feel good. And uh, I think it's going to hopefully carry them through the game, make it a little bit more of a close game. Or potentially a blowout. That would be a nice upturn. Yeah, we'll see. Flood yet to find their form in this opening two points, but let's see what they can do now on offense going upwind. On this line for Flood, Kiali McCarter, six foot four and only 16 years old. Seem to be delegating the orders there. Wearing quite sporty goggles. Yeah, sports Rex. Very fashionable. They're coming back. Reminds me of a, a Dutch soccer player, Edgar Davids. Now that's going back a few years. If any of you Tottenham fans are tuning into this one, but uh, you got to look good to play good. And I like those sporty goggles now. Oh yeah, safety first, they say. Taking their time. Getting this third point underway. As we see coach Brian Linkfield giving out some orders there to the O-line. Accompanied by his partner, Darren Linkfield in the coaching staff. The daughter on the field as well, number nine. So family affair for the Oregon team. And this has been a long time, I feel. Maybe there's a timeout call there. Oh, here it comes. The backhand pull falling short of the end zone will be picked up by McCarter. Very flat force from swing vote. Zitos, back to McCarter. Again, very hard to grind these unders going upwind. But there is Grace Cromie to keep things moving. It looks like maybe a forced middle from the swing vote. We hear the sideline shouting home, then away, quickly switching the force, trying to make them throw into the middle of the field where it's quite congested and maybe preventing a, a throwing lane for that hook. So now have the opportunity to go three in a row. Swing vote. Oh, and bobbles into the air, almost gets in the second attempt. We'll see if it's, uh, if they're doing that middle force like you're saying. It's the first time it's been on this side of the field. Yeah, it's quite flat at the moment, but it does look like they are forcing middle. Yes. That is uh, troubling. The flood team here. I think what they do sometimes is get those handers to filter through and then there's a lot of space for the cutters to then continue in when that happens. But at the moment, the middle is very clogged. They now get a shot to sideline. Carter using his body to create space. This is uh, really stifling the flood offense. Getting a few yards each time, but don't look that comfortable. High release pass, well gathered up. This time from Grace Cromie as well, Had a, having a great point here so far. But Cutter's looking a little tired now. A nice cross field pass to open up the space. Looking for the continuation. Two players isolated in the end zone. Instead goes for the pop pass.
Now back to McCarter, who's been very safe so far. Some poachers in the lane. There's a big crossfield pass there. Will he take it on? Looks like the stall count as we set there, and a great strike up the line. And it looks like she wasn't quite in bounds. Going to take it to the front of the end zone now. Looking for the inside lane. That one goes up well read, and it's a beautiful goal for Jeremy Halmeter. 16 years old. This is a very young flood team, but showed great patience there. They wake, make their whole way up the field. Yeah, and uh, you, you mentioned their age. Uh, we were talking with the coaches, um, and they were saying that this team didn't even exist last year. They'd kind of disbanded and came back together. There's only one vet player on the team. Um, the name is escaping me. Yeah, essentially a brand new roster for this flood team, pulling players from all over Oregon. And he said, winning YCC 2014, coming second 2015. Not sure if the results 2016, but on holidays 2017, going in a hi hiatus essentially. Yeah. And that's what happens for these uh, young under 20 teams. There's such a big turnover in players. So you can have a fabulous squad one year, next thing they're all gone, you gotta rebuild, start from scratch. But it's great for the development of the sport. What's your name? You're not on the roster. Oh, Linkfield, Cyrus. Okay, you're down as a different number. Oh, oh it's nine. Should have figured that out. <laughs> Just chatting to Cyrus Linkfield there on the sideline who got the assist there. Been heavily involved in Ultimate for most of her life. Also a practice player with Ivy. So expect to hear that name a lot in the future. And we're having a, a repo there being called offside. Always enjoyable. Yeah, you, for, for those tuning in, you might have noticed the uh, orange people on the field. They're observers. Um, they're not actively calling things uh, except for offsides and uh, out of bounds, I believe. Side sacks up by swing vote. Initiation cut doesn't work. Looks like a zone from flood. Three person cup. Looking to pop it through the middle now. Swing vote. Yeah, and those orange people, um, not active observers in these under 20 games, just there really to keep time limits to give advice, but do not have binding calls. And uh, definitely not Umpa Lumpas either, which are other orange people we are familiar with from the Chocolate Factory, Willy Wonka. <laughs> Many of these young players guzzling down sweets on the sideline there, I could see getting their sugar levels up. And they're a great wow. block in the cup. That is Caleb Campbell wearing the double zero jersey, channeling his inner Goose Helton. And there, the cross field inside flick changes the angle of attack. Now it. Caleb Campbell. Oh, that is oh. a crazy cross field pass. Might just work on a penny. The bookends from the thrower. What an amazing play. Wow. Flood getting that break back. That was a break indeed. They just put it across the screen. The game is tied at chapter two. Great footwork there. Just towing it. By Thalia Zitos. The 15 year old, this roster is so young. I'm surprised a lot of these players aren't playing in the under 17 division, but as you can see, well able to hang in the under 20s. They'll have a few years of eligibility in this division as well, so hopefully we'll keep seeing the flood team make it out to this event. That, uh, that play we saw with Caleb in the cup, there's a, uh when you say cup, it's typically a zone 
type defense rather than a person type defense. Uh, and in a, on a windy day like this, there's two points to it. Either you want them to try to throw it over you, because uh, there's so many people in front of the thrower, and on a windy day, anyone can jump up and grab that defense. Uh, or exactly what happened, uh, try to throw it through a hole in the cup, and uh, Caleb ate it up. Great D on him, his part. The pull coming from the flood team. This one will be picked up by the youngster. And uh, they're doing another cup defense. Yeah, I like to see that if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You see Leah Schwartz in the middle there. Oh, that is a dangerous scuba. It's just caught in time. Now Elias Schwartz giving the pop pass, the 14-year-old on his team. Looks like a debate whether it was up or down. Simultaneously, all the flood players point to the ground. The perennial ryegrass a little bit worn here at the showcase field. Been lots of adults and youngsters trundling all over it this weekend. Looks like this one's gonna be contested and go back to Ben Dixon. Coming in at stall four. Back to Schwartz. Again, just 14 years old, tries that really wow. creative cross field flick. What vision. Schwartz was actually at the World Ultimate Club Championships playing with the Singapore team Rampage. Almost the youngest person at the tournament, but actually a 13 year old playing with Argentina, but wow. looks like she may have got the assist there. No, gets the hockey assist that again, brilliant flick through the zone. I think we're seeing why she was one of the youngest players at Worlds just uh, last weekend. Two weeks ago, two weeks ago. Yeah, slightly different environment. But still the same great play, and that's maybe a good option. Throw to one of your tall receivers, William Tober, who's six foot seven. And uh, how old is he? 17 years old. Wow. You know, I grew another couple of inches before hitting 20, so if that man keeps going, he's going to have a difficult time on uh, airline flights <laughs> or also public transport. You know, and I know in Ireland anyway, if you reach six foot ten, you're actually classified as disabled and you get certain amenities to deal with being so tall. Maybe it's because we're quite a small country and uh, all our public transport and stuff is quite squishy. Don't know if that's the case here. Well, they also treat you guys well in the EU. You've got a lot of yeah, got a lot of perks. Kind, forgiving nation or um, governing continent. body. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the EU just kicked out England there. See you later. I myself am from South Dakota, and uh, we've never had a problem with space. Lots and lots of space there. I actually spent some time in South Dakota myself. That's bizarre. It is bizarre. I think I was the first ever person to visit South Dakota. Uh, was true Sturgis? Spearfish? Sturgis. Were you there for the bike rally? I was not there for bike rally, but almost got beaten up in a biker bar in Sturgis. <laughs> Later, won an eating competition <laughs> of deep fat fried steak tips. Sounds like South Dakota. Very healthy. Also, fractured my tailbone at a place called Hippie Hole, which is probably the highest cliff jump I've ever done and ever will do. Huh. And uh, an out of bounds pull. We'll focus Swing here boat. on the Oregon <laughs> and Washington teams, less on beautiful Black Hills of South Dakota. <laughs> there is Henry Haberman with the disc. Very deep horizontal stack. That's the under, looks for the quick return. Call on the field. Disc will stay with Zitos. I think we're expected to see a lot from number 18 today. Pretty strong O-line handler. 
Looks like we still have that force middle coming from swing vote. And you know, it's a difficult defense to do because you're constantly switching the force. You can often end up on the wrong side of your receiver, but again, a lot of help from the sideline to make this defensive pressure work. And it's also just confusing for the offense as a player. Shoots down the wow. line, great one-handed grab, using those gloves really well. And they're gloves. stoked to that point. They tie it up again. It's a close game. Yeah, Zito's heavily involved here. Also, a beautiful throw from Devin Jones Stanley. Look at the elation on her face. Really stoked to grab that point. Yeah, I think they realized about a minute before the game, like, hey, are we being live streamed? And all of them ran to their phones, <laughs> texting their friends. their friends, family. <laughs> Possibly the first time for many of these players to be on the big screen and uh, doing a great job so far. We are tied at trees here. as coach Horsefield giving out the orders. Probably a little horse himself after yesterday's games. Yeah, and Friday. This is a long tournament for people this age. That being said, you never really get tired or sore when you're 16, 17. We, I don't even know if we have 18 year olds. A couple. There's a couple, 18, even the odd few 19 year olds squeezing in there. Yeah, it's a long tournament. This is a pre quarter final in the U20 mixed division. Liam Grant alongside Eric Larson. Semis and finals will happen tomorrow in the YCC. Why the ICC event finishes today. Nice pass in the space, but isn't gathered up. Swing vote will have it back. Forcing forehand, another drop. And that person defense worked out for them. And then Campbell looking very focused and driven. Wow. Almost fumbles that one, the pressure coming from Adam Park. Really enjoying that matchup. Oh, a cross field pass. Can he get Can there? Can he get there? Oh, and a great intercept from Zwingvo to gather up. That wayward pass, I'm not entirely sure if Aiden Callahan intentionally left that one, trying to milk it into the end zone, or perhaps just thought it was too high to attack it early. But it will be swept up by Ben Dixon, who's on the disc now. Oh, and a big layout attempt. I guess that uh, sat on for his effort. But it's perfectly fine to continue on. The man originally from Oahu, Hawaii. Got to spend some time there myself, and he gets the layout D. Wow. Just as I'm talking, that is in fact Caleb Campbell. It's almost his second layout D of this point. Yeah, the man is a defensive machine. He's hungry for it. And they find some space in the front middle of the end zone there. A difficult window to throw into. But Michael. Drieger gets on the score sheet. Flood is uh, riding a brake train. They're up now 4-3. Yeah, there's Kelly McCarter with the assist. As I was saying, growing up in Oahu. It always seems to be a connection between Oregon and Hawaii. Met a lot of Oregon players out there. Might be something to do with the military there, I believe. Two big military states. But yeah, I've actually been to Oahu myself. Obviously, you have that famous tournament, uh, Kaiamana Classic. Have you made it out there yourself? I've never even made it to Hawaii. None of them, none of the islands. You got to Hawaiian shirt out. Uh, indeed, one of my favorites. <laughs> uh, wishful thinking, if you will. But yeah, tropical conditions here. 
in uh, Minnesota are as tropical as you're going to get in this Agreed. northern state. Agreed. The summers are beautiful and very short. Yeah, we've had summer for maybe a total of one hour, two hours over this weekend. <laughs> it was very rainy and gloomy yesterday, but uh, you managed to get sunburned nonetheless. Yeah, that's impressive. <laughs> I know. <laughs> It's the only day of this whole entire trip I've not wore sunscreen, and I got sunburned. It happens. Possibly rain burnt, overcast burnt, whatever you want to call burnt. it. But uh, as you see on the sideline for these teams, I think um, in particular the DC Swing Vote sideline has a lot of uh, drinks, soft drinks. We're also seeing a, a sweeping brush <laughs> as well. <laughs> That's a, a very official team flag, it looks. Potentially a, maybe a dad coming to support someone. I didn't quite catch a good look. I haven't been able to do the clean sweep as of yet, but maybe it's as clean sweep in bracket play, if that's when it matters. All the other losses irrelevant now. I think that's the mentality that they're taking, yes. I would say something really fun about Ultimate Frisbee is the they're some of the most creative people I've met. They have all sorts of fun cheers on the sides to keep each other's attitudes up, celebrate victories, um, or try to, you know, brush your shoulders off after a hard loss on a point. So that was a timeout called by Swing Vote. After being broken there. When a chance to settle themselves, stop the momentum gained by Flood. Back out there again is Kiali McCarty. He's played a lot of points in this game so far. Oh, and a drop oh, here. That's something you don't want to do coming off the timeout. A chance to extend their lead. We'll see if they can uh, get the score off of this uh, nice gift. Oh, an easy Quick open conversion. side cut. You won't get an easier break than that. Drop, pull, one pass. And they're pumped up right now, Flood. Emmett Stevens with a great burst to the open side. That was a quick point. Let's see it again. There it is. A very casual, what you call spike, or lack of spike, I suppose. More of an anti-spike. Flat. There you are. Yeah, you don't see that too often, but if you drop the pull, as we just saw, it immediately becomes the other team's disc, wherever it was dropped. And Washington swing vote, actually, well, Washington DC, I should say. Washington DC swing vote. Uh, representing 14 different schools from all over the DC area. Quite the combination. And uh, yeah, I do quite like the name Swing Vote, quite a clever name. It's very clever. Is, uh, uh, is Washington DC a swing state? <laughs> it's not even a state. That's the weirdest part about it. <laughs> Trick question. <laughs> I guess I, I did go through a little bit of civics. And yeah, we see identity. that Cup D again. Here's the Cup. A lot of tall players in the front. And they try to jack it Big over hack. the top and left in isolation. The tall man, William Tober. Not the person you want to leave alone in the end zone. But this one just short, trying to set up their offense. Quick transition to a more match defense from Flood. And there he gets the goal on the second attempt. William Tober, the target man. A skyscraper. It's hard not to see him. Yeah, that zone looked very good for a while. They were containing, and then the deep, deep just switched off for a second. And that, I don't know how he missed Tober going deep. But there we see him there, cutting to the front cone and getting a much needed goal for Washington, D.C. It's interesting that if you think about the geographies of Washington, D.C., it's not that big of an area that they have to pull players from, whereas we were talking with the captains earlier, the coaches, rather, 
um, of Oregon flood. And they said they're pulling from Bend uh, and a couple other key cities, but driving a couple hours to practice just for uh, to get the team together. It's really impressive that they've pulled the games they have despite probably their lack of ability to practice as often. As a full team, that is. Yeah, neither team really having a competitive game so far at the tournament. Flood on the, the good side of a few blowouts. Uh, swing votes, O-line going on a bit of a run in the other games. But again, much tougher pool for them. And uh, just one point separates them right now. But swing vote will need to, need to get some breaks back if they want to win this game. It sounds like they're ready for it. They've been chanting and chanting on the sidelines. It's a quite a stark difference to the flood sidelines. I think notably, swing vote have a few more players here. Probably another five or six. And that helps on the sideline. It might help in the tail end of this game as well. We've seen a lot of repeats out there for Flood. Campbell, Ricardo getting lots of game time. Hey, Dan, Dan, Dan. Also, Cyrus Linkfield, a key part of this Flood offense. They set up in a horizontal stack. Ricardo now. Thinks about the deep shot and sends it to Linkfield, who has plenty of separation, but... Oh dear, couldn't oh. quite connect. Oh, that is an unfortunate drop. I think she was celebrating that one before she had reeled it in. Now it's her mark picking up the disc. Leah Schwartz. It's been monumental so far. Now, big oh shot boy. up win. This one's going to hang. Plenty of bodies underneath. Who's going to read it the best? Oh, great boxing out and positioning. Wow. And gets the assist. What a goal. What a goal indeed. And I think that is CC Butcher, who, under a lot of pressure, two flood defenders around her, holds position, Boxes gets the up. disc, and gets the assist as well. Wow. That is Samuel Swenson, Ryan Hold, scoring upwind, and that is the first or second break of the game, is it, for DC swing vote, tying up the game. And more importantly, an upwind break. It's now a huge opportunity to go on a bit of a run going downwind. And all that stemming from the great offensive cutting of CC Butcher. And some key body placement as well, as far as putting yourself in between the disc and the other player so they can't quite get to it. It's a non-contact sport, but you're allowed to be in your own space uh, and, and not let other people get to that disc, potentially, if you're playing on the disc. A great lesson in boxing out from Butcher. And she had to box out two players there. It's much easier two to- Two big players, too. Well done, Cece. Two players probably taller than her. But that's it, position nine-tenths of the law. Is that what they say? That's what I say anyway. And I am they in, in this case. Liam Grant. Lessons from Liam. This one will be a low pull. Plenty of zip on it. Good Haberman. Backhand into space. Lots Lovely of space. Throw. Trying to get the continuation cut. Puts back to Haberman, who again throws in the space, leading to the far shoulder. Oh, and the disc goes up. This one's going to be dangerous. And it's going to be caught, but well out of bounds. Can DC get two breaks in a row? That's something you don't see in many other sports either. The high five afterwards saying, hey, nice, nice try. Sought out to Gunter Prestowick. Bit of mouthful that one. We spent some time training that, that name. I don't think the coaches were that good at pronouncing it. Better known as Gunter. Wow. To his friends. Nice layout grab. Ava 
McKay. Getting high in the stall count, gets the short reset. Back in the quarterback position is Leah Schwartz. Getting high in the stall count. Again, the lateral cut, a release valve from the handlers. Double cut there. And a call. If you're watching on social media, feel free to comment on who you're supporting, where you're watching from. I know uh, Washington DC Scandal are also playing a women's semi-final right now, I do believe. Yeah. We had uh, Sarah Lord up in the comedy boot quite a lot this weekend, but great movement there. Schwartz looking for that inside channel now in power position. We know she has a big flick. Calling for end zone offense now. Good cut from the front of the stack. As Ava McKay again. There's definitely a poach in the lane. Good switching from the flood defense. Timeout called. And we see there during that point, Haberman wasn't really marking anyone, just kind of swanning around the field, sitting in the open side channel and causing a ruckus for the DC offense. And that's why they call the timeout. They just want a little time to talk about it, how they're going to deal with those poaches and switches. Timeout called by DC. You have a chance to get another break in a row and take the lead again in this game. After going two up, Flood answered back, trading blow for blow. As we see <laughs> some kind of, <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. Some kind of tumbleweed game. I've seen a few I teams wish do this comment. during a timeouts <laughs> where both teams get together and play a little game, those who aren't on the line. Nice way to interact with your opposition and good spirit. Now coming in off the timeout, his swing vote. Tries the up line, that one's gonna work out. Not sure that was the intended receiver, but Gunter, tries to it, gets the break. First swing vote, they take the lead back. You two players cutting to the same space there from swing vote. Not exactly what you want, especially coming off the timeout, but you can see they're a little bit um, maybe upset or annoyed at how that panned out. They got the goal, but you can see he was maybe a little frustrated with the cutter coming into the same space as the handler at the same time, but it's going to work out for them. Not to be too pedantic, but I, I bet we have some first time watchers tuning in. Uh, and so the reason, one of the things you'll know, uh, or if you don't, I'm gonna tell you now, is that there's a stall count going on every time someone's holding the disc. Their defender is counting 10 seconds out. Um, and so sometimes you'll see a rushed play if there's a really good mark defense, they might not be able to get off the throws they want. You've seen the waist high drone shot here, that's pretty cool. Big shout out to all the camera crew. 
This coverage brought to you by USA Ultimate, produced by Fulcrum Media, doing a great job here. Trying to move the mark around. Now shooting one deep, this one coming late. And that, that throw a little too far. For Michael Drieger. So again, can this break train keep rolling for a DC? I wonder at some point in American history, would you have been able to get a, a train from uh, DC to, to Oregon? Can you still do now? We still can with the Amtrak. That being said, uh, I don't know, recently Amtrak hasn't had the best of uh, coverage, maybe? <laughs> yeah, I wonder how long it would take. I want to see if I can Google Maps that one. Definitely opposite sides of the country. Will equally matched in terms of ultimate. So just one point separates these sides. Big backhand hook going up into the wind. Great read and positioning. Gets this for swing vote. Being patient, not looking to the end zone straight away. Now the cut comes, this one very high. And that is a high mismatch. And Gunter gets his second goal. Break chain keeps rolling. Choo choo. Now just one point away from half time. Half will be taken at eight. That could have been Kira's first goal, but Gunter came in, took advantage of his height, snagged the point. That's gonna happen a lot, uh, throwing to the up one end zone. It's gonna bounce up in the air and height becomes a factor those 50-50 discs. Looks like a timeout called again by Swing Vote. Called it earlier, trying to stop this momentum. Didn't work, let's see if it works this time. Having to go upwind to prevent Swing Vote from taking early half time. You know, it would be a real luxury as if we could have their captains, our coaches mic'd up. We could hear what the kind of advice they're giving their teams. Yeah, it's something that everyone would advise in Ireland because <laughs> it'd be a lot of work for the producers beeping out some stuff <laughs> our coaches say. But um, I'm sure here, lots of positivity coming from the coaches. And that, that was obvious talking to the the DC coaches before the game, Adrian Nicholson, Asako Yamamoto. You know, they're really positive, especially after three tough losses. They're saying they're taking every point at, at a time, focusing just on improving themselves as players, sticking to that team mentality. They say they enjoy playing spirited and competitive ultimate, also finding and petting all the dogs and representing themselves amongst the best in the country. Don't know if you spotted too many doggos around here. Uh, I, have, I don't think they brought any, but that is quite a trek for a dog to take anyway. Let's go, yeah, we are playing ultimate here, so no dogs on the field. That would be a different sport. Very different. Frequently confused, so if you know someone that asks about dogs, send them to USAU, tell them to watch the stream, and they'll learn a thing or two about some highly competitive youth ultimate in the great state of Minnesota. Breaking up the field. Campbell, nice. up who shoots up the line. That was a massive up the line. Waste no Second. time, the jacket, and that is a great goal from Flood. Needed that one, a great offensive hold going upwind. 
Never slow down. Good to see Campbell grabbing the bull by the horns here and taking control of this game. All shooting up the open side. Started off with Anne-Marie Haberman. And then finishing off with Ethan Allison going to uh, Liberty University. Yeah, in Virginia. East Coaster. It's quite a trek for him to make. Oregon to Virginia, huh? I believe a bit of coast-to-coast -coast action going on. Gunter, Chris DeWick. Uh, went to school in a school without walls. That's what I've heard. It's a charter school, yeah. I presume there actually is walls, though. That's a good question. In DC, there must be. I think Doesn't they're talking have that about metaphorical letter. walls, not physical walls. Don't know what's holding the ceiling up in that school, but he's going to Oregon next year. Right. So that's a, a nice flip a flip flop they're doing. Who knows? Might be teammates even with some of these flood players in the future. A lot of them quite young, so not many of them heading to university just yet. But uh, Massive pull. a very strong university scene in Oregon, both in men's and women's division. Because you're integral to this point. Again, this is a very passive zone from Flood. Looks like a kind of a 2-2-2-1. Two, 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 I'm not very sure. Mostly just two players on the force. Allowing them to swing. We're now looking like a more traditional cup as it gets to the sideline. We've seen Campbell already get a D in the middle. Wow. Can't stop that inside pass though. One more to Kassir and upline. A high pass floats over and gathered up eventually by McCarter to Campbell. They want to stop. DC taking half. Can they get a break here? Oh, no, it's in the drop. Let's see if they set up their zone again. I can't tell if they are, know if they're setting up a zone or not. Looks like some people are. I'm not sure if everyone is, though. Looks like they've switched to more traditional single coverage defense. Tober with the disc. You can see him pretty much head and shoulders above everyone else in the field. But a good matchup there against Campbell. Nice big crossfield swing. Things heating up here in Blaine, Minnesota. DC trying to take half. If they can keep possession and get it to the end zone, they'll do just that. Now just a couple of yards away. And this is his own look from Flood. Plenty of people free on the far side. Four on his oh back, boy. that a dangerous throw. Oh, an amazing steal oh, and collides no. with teammate on the sideline. Can't Hope tell they're okay there. Or bumped. Yeah, it's two of their top players colliding. But it gets up okay. McCarter, that's unusual to see that. It was a good D though. Max Linkfield, like a deer in the headlights there, watching that fantastic play, forgetting that she is actually quite close to the field. Now the hawk goes up, that one very zippy. Can she read it? Oh, a little too much pace on it. Lays out anyway for the folks at home. Swing vote, waste no time. And they're setting up their zone again, but it's really loose, it's poachy, for sure. Yeah, very loose, very chill. Bringing in the organ vibes to their defense. Yeah. 
They seem quite happy for DC to swing. Not getting a lot of interactions with their cutters. You can see pretty much playing four-handers back here, DC. So when they get that swing off, they're able to get the continuation, get some yards just in the handler space. I said they might transition here. DC still the disc. And that is the goal, and they take half. Good, patient play from DC after trailing at one point in this first half. They now lead by two going into the second. Ben Dixon picks up the assist. Adam Park, who's had a great first half. First swing vote. Again, this is the most points they've scored in any game so far. This week, looking to book a spot in the quarterfinals. So yeah, great first half here in the YCC under 20 mixed division. Liam Grant alongside Eric Larson. Washington DC swing vote with a two point lead, but all to play for here in the second half.
Welcome back to the US Open 2018. We're at the YCC under 20 mixed division. We have a pre-quarter matchup. Washington DC swing vote in the lead, 8-6 against Flood from Oregon. Flood boosting up from the lower pools to take on former champions swing vote. who had a tough first day, but are in the lead here. Liam Grant alongside Eric Larson. If you're wondering, why that halftime took so long, you're not the only one. Uh, these teams in no rush, both teams having a little siesta in that halftime, possibly doing their car insurance or calling home. Giving us plenty of time here to recoup in the commentary booth anyway. And looks like swing vote will start on defense going upwind right to left. And Eric, what do you think Flood needs to do to get back into this game? Uh, well, they, they had that poachy defense, the kind of zone defense rather than a person-to-person -person defense. Uh, maybe they just need to work it a little harder, close up those holes a little bit, because um, it, it really made um, DC throw a lot. We'll see if that can t generate some turnovers. We see a side stack there, and again, actually isolating Campbell from the handler position to go up line, quickly followed by Haberman, who has acres of space and shoots to the end zone. Great isolation play, reminiscence of one of their points in the first half. Just three huge upfield open side passes. That side stack giving a lot of space to exploit. And Haberman is so free for pretty much the whole entire time of this game. Nobody can shut her down. She's speedy with great throws. And drops a pinpoint flick to Tory King. And I like that side stack play from Flood. It's clear they have less players here at the tournament. I'm sure they're quite tired. This is a very tough game. The sun is out. So by isolating a few players, at least you don't have everyone running, not everyone gassing themselves out. I think that's why Swing Vote have had the lead in this mid part of the game. It's just those numbers, be able to bring fresh legs on after you get a break, keep the pressure up. I agree. Right now it's been a game of attrition as far as uh, if Flood tries to keep up with the style that Swing Vote's playing. And so I think we're going to see a change in the second half. Like you said, isolating a few players, making some smart plays. So nice offensive hold coming out of half for Oregon Flood. Brings them back to within one. They're going to have to get an upwind break though if they want to win this game. The 
again we get that low flying drone shot of the pull oh what a cool view almost looks like it's strapped to one of the head of the defensive players there as it <laughs> tears down chasing the pull oh close defensive pressure McCarter coming up against Tober, a good matchup there. Hits the up line. Kibiri shoots the end zone. The answer back. Deja vu working it up the open side. Two offensive holes from both teams. You have a plan. You work the plan and uh, you reap the rewards. Yeah, well executed there. Well, I see more teams maybe just trying to shut down the open side a little better. Again, cutting towards or away from the disc gives that deep bar under option. So very difficult to shut down both, but having a lot of success on the open side. And given the wind is kind of blowing towards the commentary stand now, from the far side towards the near side, you want to push them that far sideline into the wind, make them throw a more difficult swing, break pass. Then we'll pop up and hopefully the defense can just jump up and grab them. Let's see if they mix it up here now. Swing vote on defense. This won't be new information for anyone who's been watching the stream. These teams have been taking their time in between points. I think that's probably favoring Flood because as you see, Haberman's back out there. They're using a lot of the same players on O and D, so they probably need the rest more than swing vote do. Again, Haberman drives up line. Uh, Grace Cromie has been a very effective cutter for this team. Haberman weighing one glove, only on a throwing hand. More common for the, the glove to be on your off hand. I, I've experienced ultimate. Definitely. Ethan Allison, the backwards cap. Oh, and a dangerous pass. Some contact there. Doesn't look there's a call. Again, we see that high five from the two teams. That is Adam Park again. So, swing vote with a chance to break. Thinks about the hook straight off the bat. Goes for the round re reset, beautiful throw in the space for Park. And again, Haberman often just sits in the open channel, then taken deep. Oh, and that swing is gonna be difficult to catch. And Flood, wanna waste no time. Oh, and that is a dangerous throw from Campbell. And it goes out the back, just rushed a little too much there, I think. That is Canyon Raymond holding his side there. But is fit to continue. Now we see the DC side come up a little side stack of their, their own. But Flood very quick to poach the lane, but they send it deep straight away to the park and getting it back from his earlier. Jerry Howmeter is gonna go back foul on the throw. Come in and stall one, so not contested. Back with Jonah Lee. Hits to the side stack. Haberman, again, not too tight on the mark. Leaving CC Butcher quite free. Now a low hook. Kind of get there. Oh, great catch under pressure. Campbell was flying in. But Swenson Reinhold keeps his cool. 
Now back with CC Butcher. Notably remarked by a male player. Happy to switch between the genders, this flood team. And now a great goal for a swing vote. That's a break. They extend the lead to three. Upwind break. That's always critical on a day like this. Using that break side very effectively. The left-handed player always wants to throw that inside-out backhand, often catching the mark out. I can't tell you the number of times I'm caught off guard by a lefty player who holds it in their right hand just to mess with you. Yeah, most lefties know how to take advantage of their gift. Oh, yeah. I'd call it a gift. Every sport you can think of, it catches everyone off guard. Tino Tran on the left here, frame there, trundling off the field. World famous photographer. If he gets a shot of you making the play, it's probably gonna be turned into a poster. Uh, here working for USA Ultimate. Usually on the dark side of lens, as I call it, but we managed to catch him there in the wild. Good undercutting from Natasha Castaneda. But a nice D from Gunter. Now looking to continue this break momentum. Gunter swings it. Good fake in the middle, but a lot of flood players scrambling back to try and contain them. Now with the trusted hands of Jonah Lee. And a nice goal from DC. They're starting to run away with this one in the second half. Right back forward, right back forward. That's gotta feel great for them. Once you get momentum like that, it's just score, score, score. I believe that was Jacob Leibowitz. Getting another goal, the 18 year old coming in at five foot 10. And now a timeout being called. If you're watching at home, you probably have enough time now to grab a cup of tea, check your Instagram. Tell your friends to uh, log into USAU. Yeah, watch this great youth ultimate game. And on such great fields, too. Uh, the Blaine National Sports Complex. It's the largest sports complex in the US, and it's the home of the US Open. They pull, I think 2016, it was in a different town, but they decided the fields are just too gorgeous, the weather too gorgeous, and they brought it back to the great state of Minnesota. So yeah, you live in Minnesota now, went to St. Olaf. Yep big feeder school for a lot of the top Minnesota teams. What's it like having this tournament at your back door? You see all of the club players are here. They're either volunteering or they're helping coach some of the YCC teams. Uh, and it's great to get familiar faces, you know, helping support this sport, whether they're playing high level or they're uh, coaching, you know, ICC or YCC, really. I have to say I have a bit of a complex. Uh, Carleton College is in our neighborhood as well, St. Olaf, so always kind of second or third or maybe even fourth to them. <laughs> but it's a great place to be, and it's a good ultimate scene. Yeah, cut rules. It's true, it's true. 
big sh big shout out to be in but not a not a particularly big college i've heard no they they have maybe 2000 students olaf has about 3000 students and people come from all over the states to go to carlton just for their their ultimate program yeah quite the dynasty there we actually watching some of the the open semifinals there was more Carlton players on the other teams than there was on Sub-Zero, certainly on Ring of Fire. It's true. The Sub-Zero had a great upset yesterday against Revolver, who just took Worlds just two weeks ago. Yeah, I don't think many of us saw that coming. We said, as always, it's going to be a great semi-final if the home team against the best in the world. Let's hope they put a good match up, and they were amazing. That's the home team advantage for you. The crowds would not stop screaming. I, I bet everyone's hoarse now. Yeah, certainly Jeff Horsfield, coach <laughs> of this Swing Vote team. That was bad, Liam. That was a great segue. That's the segue of the weekend right there. Flood so, with a downwind point. Yeah, Flood looking to stop the bleeding now. Ricardo looked off in the free under, high stall count. A cheeky lefty. Yeah, I like that lefty dish to the uprushing handler in the tight space. Campbell involved, wants to look deep. Has McCarter, hasn't gone deep a lot this game, but you can see why he's a great option. Gets up early, no chance for the defender to make a bid. Kiali McCarter, he's 16 years old. And he's been in a handler position quite a lot in this game, but I'd like to see him going deep more, just as he's done there. It's a good option too, it throws the defense off because they're so used to uh, the cutters in their positions, the handlers in their positions, and people are used to the set plays. And I think, you know, string vote I put Adam Park on McCarter thinking he's gonna be in the handler position. Adam Mark, very quick, nippy in the small spaces, putting a lot of pressure on him there, but it's really the first time in the game McCarter's going like, I'm going to the end zone. And that's maybe where you want one of their taller defenders William Tober springs to mind. I don't know if they would have taken on that deep shot if uh, they didn't have the height advantage. But Tober usually playing on this DCO line as you see him out there now. Let's look to the future. If, if Carter keeps going deep like that, I wonder if they might do some sort of uh, defense where you have one player always picking up the last back who's a little bit taller and ready for that. Because time now an issue as well as the point cap as we near 20 minutes where they will have the, the soft cap on at two to the highest score. While if we run out of time completely we'll then have a hard cap. So not a, not a bad option going for those hawks downwind. Campbell's staying out there. You, they know this is all or nothing for both teams. If they want to be in a chance of winning the tournament. Getting a little hardware. Again, we see the side stack and Campbell peeled off great to shut down Gunter. He's he now continues going. on. Oh, and Tober. Long limbs just get there in time. Good pressure from Ethan Allison. You can see they're still pumped up. Flood, they want to win this game. Nice cross field swing. Oh, and a big D. A nice undercut from Tory King. Now a Chromie. Looking for the reset. A lot of people really around there. Goes for the no look swing. Got under pressure there and swing vote, have it back. Gunter on this downward sideline, getting high in the stall count. He's gonna have to throw something. And there was a severe mismatch for those two, so that's a safe play. 
When it first went up, I wasn't so sure, but you see Tober swanning over to the corner of the end zone, this very high, then you're like, oh, he's gonna get it. There he is calling for it. No question. Yeah, jump for that one, but probably didn't even need to. It's for the fans. I think it's for Tino Tran sitting on the, the corner just beside him. So Flood needs to dig deep here. Muster up the courage, the motivation, the energy to get back into this game. It's no good just scoring their opens and trading. They need breaks and plenty of them. It really stinks to get scored on, of course, but when you start an offensive point downwind like this, it could be the momentum you need to get a break in the next point. Getting a nice shot of the coach for Flood. They're clearly doing something right. This is a tight match. DC up just a bit, but really highly, high level of play. Yeah, that was Brian and Dara Linkfield. Fair play to all the coaches in the YCC division, putting in the hard yards to help these youths develop their sporting careers. Off to the thankless job, but we'll thank you now. And again, we see a deep shot coming. This time it's McCarter in the quarterback position. And another great goal. And he's called in. And it's Sam McCarty. As we see Cyrus Lingfield starting off that play to McCarter. And finished off with McCarty and a couple of times we've seen Flood do that so well. Oh, Three pass yeah. offense oh, yeah. up the open side. And oh, yeah. oh, yeah. I'd like to see Swingo do more to shut that down. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're hearing another Oregon team cheer for their friends now. You always can use a little extra support wherever you can get it. Trying to see if that is Oregon eruption in the boys division. It is eruption. I see one of their jerseys. Maybe what they need. They've had the smallest sideline for the majority of this game, but now coming out to help their fellow states people. Yeah. I think it could be a huge help. What, what do you call someone from Oregon? Oregon night? I would say or hmm. Oregonese? Oregoners. Oregonian? That doesn't sound right. Oregonian. So yeah, plenty of Oregonians on the sideline now. Now coming out of that zone, a nice pop through the middle. Takes her eyes off the disc. Ryan Kibiri, you feel like if they're gonna get back in this game, now is the time. Campbell grinding up line, pick called. It will stay with Campbell. Or it will not. Oh, affecting, okay. Going back to Emma Stevens, not sure why exactly. Don't think it really affected that upline rush. This is another interesting aspect of Ultimate. It's uh, the players decide the outcomes. It's uh, self-officiated, and uh, if there's a, ever a, some sort of disagreement, they just send it back and do it again. So we'll see what they decide. Oh no, the flood! 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 Oh no
be a little miscommunication. Big break opportunity, somewhat wasted for a flood, but it'll set up in this very loose cup again. A lot of gaps in the middle, but they come covering across now. Lane the handlers get some resets in the middle. Now going backwards. Big swing. Oh, and unfortunately can't be brought in by Caroline Kassir. Oh, and a shot to the back of the end zone. That's a great assist and goal. That is Natasha Castaneda assisting Ethan Allison. And that is the shot you want to take. To get a break on the board for a flood going upwind. Great vision. Seeing Allison in the back of the end zone. And maybe Eruption could take some credit for that. I'd say so. Always great to have a loud sideline. You can hear him again right now. I think they're cheering for Kali, one of the leaders on this flood team. Kali McCarter. Nice creative three cheers coming from the sideline. Lots of flood references there as we see the eruption. Boys team getting pumped up. Some funny chants there. Usually an interesting statement about a disaster, then oh no, the flood follows it. Don't know if many of these DC players can swim, but there's a flood coming for them. That's right. And Carter's gonna make a big play with all this uh, pump up he's getting from the sidelines. Yeah, this is the one of the loudest sidelines we've seen all weekend. And I'm talking about the stadium games as well. Making their voices heard. Well, before McCarter can make a huge play, he's got to make a nice D first. And DC with the disc again. We see that zone. Great inside pass from Schwartz. Again, one of the youngest players on the field. But one of the most experienced as well. She's cool as a cucumber. Now grinding up, getting some yards in the handler position. Schwartz continues the swing. Leading the disc out to Claire Schmidt. Back again. Leah Schwartz always looking at those inside channels, but gets hand blocked. Definitely a big height mismatch there. Gone straight to the end zone. Nobody on the force here as they try and recover. You see Kali with the disc. And now shoots the end zone. And that's going to work. Just one point game now. Big break from Flood. You got to say the sideline is having an influence here. Everyone is excited, pumped up, adding a great atmosphere to the game. KLE answers the crowd's calls, takes on that big flick. As you hear the sideline shout, oh no, the flood. 
Talia Zitos getting the goal. I'd love to see Oregon boys cheering someone else's name and see if the, the hypothesis sticks with whoever they're cheering for. Yeah, definitely could be cheering for Zitos there, getting free in the end zone. Looks like a timeout call, but you can never be too sure of these teams. <laughs> But I do believe the soft cap is gone. Not entirely sure when it went, but it could be game to 12. Or sorry, 14. Uh, 14. It went off, yeah, the 17th minute, which seems a little odd. But uh, yeah, game to 14. And we just watched DC walk up the field. I can't tell if they're tired or if they're maybe a little down after that break. Looks like offside might be called, no? Oh, it is being called, but... I think the game advisor is signal offside, but it's up to the team to call it. And this is the second offside, so we'll take it from the middle of the field. Not what Flood wanted to do. Call from the sideline saying right where we wanted them. But DC after two passes already at the opposition brick mark. Oh, and a wayward throw ends up in the paws of Haberman who throws it away straight. Oh, an unfortunate error, a chance to even up the game. Jonah Lee. Tries to shoot the end zone. Don't think that one was jumped in. Jacob Leibowitz now in the front of the end zone. An easy cut. Haberman caught out that time. And they keep their two point cushion. Kibiri. And it's just a classic cut to space. And yeah, it wanted to quieten that Oregon sideline. Again, big mistake from Flood being offside on that pull. Gave DC a, a short field. We're able to get one turn, but threw it away. And uh, DC got it on the second asking. Yeah, this is all or nothing for both teams if they want to remain in contention for the championship. Two past winners. Is it a game to 14? So Flood, now in offense. Let's see if they go for their three pass trick. Setting up in a horizontal stack this time. Kiali McCarter getting high in the stall count now. A better mismatch. Oh, and a bit too much mustard on that one. Interesting to see McCarter going up against Tober. As I said earlier, was surprised he wasn't taking uh, McCarter on the D-line now doing so, so not able to really use him as a deep option as effectively anyway. We'll see if it's a question of height or speed with those two. Yeah, now setting up in a side stack. Flood, get the easy under from Gunther. 
to Tober. Gunter again, getting whatever he wants downfield. Now with Ava McKay. The swing. UCC Butcher, and it's a turnover. They have it back. Deep option could be coming. This one has a little more float on it. Campbell chasing this one. Milking it into the end zone. That's a great goal. We're back to it in one. It will be game point for a swing vote going downwind. So Flood's going to have to hold some real tight D on this last one. Yeah, they're going to have to break twice if they want to win this game. Campbell read that one exceptionally well. Clearly does a civic duty, has his library card. You're gonna find that when McCarter's being matched up against William Tober, he doesn't have the height advantage. Probably the only person in the field that he doesn't. So he's gonna drop more into the handler role and look to, uh, to throw the assist rather than catch the goal. And he does just that. Campbell's showing his pace. He's been unbelievable throughout this game along with teammate Cyrus Linkfield, also Anne-Marie Haberman. Those stars ready to shine now. This is all or nothing. For the sake of viewership, you'd love to see Oregon get an upwind break right now. And that's really the first time we've seen the swing vote silent getting loud. And they're saying when we root, we root for the district. Kind of a cheer battle going on in the sideline here. But it all matters what happens on the field. On side for that pull, which rolls out of bounds, will be taken on the near sideline. I think that is a travel. He did not go to where it first went out of bounds, but it's not going to be called. No one seems to care. Oh, and that one out of bounds. Oh, dear. I think the player knew maybe the flood coach getting a little too vocal. Maybe should let the players decide, getting caught up in the heat of the moment. But uh, it was the right call. You can see how invested these coaches are, Brian Linkfield, in this game. In it to win it. Haberman in the power position. Brian. Campbell now at the disc. You can see a big cross field option. It's a dangerous one though. Goes the pushbacks back to Haberman. Spreads Massive. the field really well. Now drives up field. Great give go. Campbell now into the front of the end zone. And we're going to Universe Point, people. Wow. Oh, maybe a call on the field. Not sure what happened. Maybe a pick earlier on. We saw some of the flood players already flooding the field. Showing their namesake. But it will go back. Looks like it would be calling in stall one. Haberman, plenty of time to pick out an option in the end zone. Perhaps we'll just go for the easier swing. Oh, Campbell using his body to protect this there. Now a big around to the far side of the field. And now they can flood the end zone. Double game point. Just what you want in a game of ultimate. This has everything layout. Great catches, cross field passes here as you see Campbell. The maestro of this offense, taking control, not afraid to take on the more difficult throw. Yeah, we have a double game point on our hands. DC will start the disc, but going upwind. Right. Momentum definitely with Oregon right now. Who's your favorite to take this one? I have to cheer for the underdogs. I'm excited for DC to get something. And technically the higher seed going into the 
going into this tournament. <laughs> That's a good point. But yeah, very little between these two teams. Great performances all around. But unfortunately, there can only be one winner. In the bracket, anyway. Winners all around, just making it to the event. Right, traveling this far, playing this well. They're all winners. And this is the games that come for, you know. These are the ones that will develop character in future years. On that last point, they always say the disc don't lie. They scored once, he was called back, and they scored again. On the O-line, first swing vote, Kibiri, Schwartz, Tober, Leibowitz, Jonah Lee, and Ben Dixon, and they're calling offside again. Oh dear. That is a big mistake again from Flood. Not paying attention. Again, the, the observer was there to make the hand signal, so there won't be too much of a debate about it. Giving away half field on double game point, a mortal sin there. We'll see if DC can use it though. Going with the zone as well. John Lee, just a small pop pass. Again, I think that's a good idea. There's a lot of space in the middle of the zone. Oh, a touch on the swing from Evan Stevens on the force there. Oh, now with a lot of space here, swing vote. They've got around the cup. But now all seven players are flood behind the disc. Not far to go. Who's going to take it upon themselves to shoot to the end zone? Getting high in the stall count now. Back around to Lee. Oh, again, almost Campbell getting there. Jonah Lee. Back to Leo Schwartz. And you see Cece asking for it, but. Dixon shoots the front corner. That is game. Wow. Swing vote, get the winning goal. Unbelievable performance, heartbreak for Flood. They played outstanding, kudos to them. A tough loss, but a great game all around. And you have to feel a big part of it came to being offside twice in two key points of the game, giving swing vote at the short field on double game point. I think. I think they're gonna, they're definitely gonna kick themselves for that, but you know, there's nothing you can do. Hindsight's 2020. Yeah, many lessons learned here in the pre quarter of the YCC under 20 mixed division. Swing vote will be playing a quarter final later today. Flood now in the consolation bracket. Yeah, thrilling game for everyone involved. Some future stars in the making here in Blaine, Minnesota. Swing vote. This is their first win of the tournament, but winning when it matters. That swing vote. That's the swing vote. <laughs> yeah, some outstanding play. And I think we'll hear a lot about these flood players in the future. Who knows, we might see swing vote on the live stream again. Thanks very much for tuning in to this uh, USA Ultimate broadcast. I've been Liam Grant alongside Eric Larson. I look forward to seeing you again.